our next um, section is about criminology. And I'm joined by Steve Toombs and Deborah Drake. Thank you for joining us today. Steve, what is criminology? Oh, OK, what, is, what, what a nice question to begin with. Well, what is I criminology? So, because yep. it, it's, there's so many interchangeable words and there's so much language around a lot of this. There are. Criminology is in many ways quite diverse. So there are, there are different ways of uh, thinking about about crime and criminals and criminality, and there are different ways of teaching and learning criminology. So, so some criminology courses will focus much more on uh, different kinds of crime. Others will try and understand what motivates the criminal, what's the, what are the causes of crime, um, trying to understand the criminal mind. Some will focus more on profiling, the kind of stuff that's, uh, the kind of uh, process activities that's the stuff of TV detective series, uh, finding clues about who the criminal is. Um, then there are courses which focus much more on the institutions of criminal justice, like police, courts, prisons, youth justice and so on. And, and of course, anything called criminology will have some bits of those, but at the OU I think our particular brand of criminology, if I can use that word, um, is in the genre of what's become known as critical criminology. So critical criminology much more focuses on, focuses on, on process of criminalisation. How is it that certain kinds of people and certain kinds of activities end up being labelled as criminal and people get treated as criminals. And what being treated as, uh, treated as a criminal and labelled as a criminal means, um, those kinds of processes. And why is it that some, some kinds of people and some activities don't end up being, being criminalised or subject to criminal justice processes? So it's very much, uh, the, the criminology we do is very much in that, in that kind of uh, introduction, uh, uh, critical criminology mode. and. Um, for anybody watching, if they want to find out a bit more about, uh, about our brand of criminology, um, they can look at our Open Learn free course, have a taster, introduction to critical criminology, spend a couple of hours spinning around that, and they'll get a good flavour of, uh, of the kind of criminology that we do here at the Open University. And I guess a lot of Level 1 students might find that useful, maybe if they're doing psychology or something that would complement it. Ab 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 absolutely. It gives, it gives a, a, a very gentle... Uh, overview, introduction to the terrain, which which kind of constitutes that that genre of criminology. I should say, of course, uh, that we can't just do what we want in terms of uh, in terms of deciding what criminology is. So, we uh, every discipline, criminology included, uh, has to meet certain requirements, externally validated. So we have to cover certain things to call our program a criminology program. It's just we give it our own flavour, as other 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 institutions will give their criminology their own flavour. Yeah. I mean, your department has grown phenomenally over the last couple of years, hasn't it? Yes, it has. Yeah, well, it's, it's grown significantly, uh, almost doubled, I think. But the, 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 the composition of the, as a, of the department has changed. So we do have, we have many more bespoke criminologists, so to speak, um, and many more people working specifically in this, uh, on this terrain of, of criminology. We also have many people, I include myself, um, who are associated with a, a particular brand of, of critical criminology, even which is which is uh, which is uh, around known as the social harm perspective, yeah. or focuses around the idea of social harm. I mean, we have a research centre called the Harm and Evidence Research Collaborative, and uh, if you look if you look at our blog, uh, the Herc blog site. Uh, look at some of the blogs that uh, myself and colleagues have posted that will give you a very good idea. Again, another good way of both accessing criminological material, but also of getting a sense of the kind of criminology that we do, focused in particular um, around a critical analysis of social harms. Excellent. So we've just shown the link for that and we'll also put the link um, on the resources page of the website if you'd like to take a more detailed look um, at that later. Uh, so, so different sort of areas that you're involved with, and, and as you say, Steve, you're really into the... Um, uh, the area around uh, social harm. Um, so, so how might that sort of link? I mean, when you were talking about what is criminology, you mentioned a lot of things that I think people would traditionally, outside criminology, think, yeah, it's, it's this, it's the profiling, it's this, that, and the mm. other. And I imagine that a lot of students wanting to go into it would want to be focusing on those areas, but it's a lot more broad. Yes, it, it, it is. As I said, Karen, I mean, of course, we, you know, we do have to cover the, 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 the standard elements of criminology to call ourselves a criminology degree, but it is, but it is broad, and I think it's a... A, a, a critical criminological perspective, a focus on social harm, allows you to, to question why certain activities, why certain processes end up being dealt with through the criminal justice system. And also, what are the consequences of that? So, for example, uh, you know, one, one, of the, uh, one of the areas of focus that we have is on harms associated with using the criminal justice system. What harms does the criminal justice system itself produce? Uh, and again, to refer to some online material that we have, we have a uh, uh, we have we have a focus on 
by one of our colleagues, Vicky Cooper, on the harms associated with imprisonment. It's, it's called finding. It's an interactive tool called Finding the Truth, uh, which people can access. Um, and that says this. Okay, it's it's a scenario base around a, a woman who's caught for shoplifting, and you're asked to to follow the case through and determine whether or not she's guilty, and if she's guilty, whether or not she should go to prison. So it looks on the face of it, this woman is guilty, should she go to prison? And the immediate response is yes, because that, that's what happens when people are found guilty of crimes, right? But then if you take a social harm perspective, you start to ask other questions. OK, what was the, what was the crime in the first place? This woman was shoplifting. It wasn't, it's a crime, it's illegal, but it's not a violent crime. Is she a danger to society? Probably not. Is she a danger to the local shopkeepers? Probably. <laughs> but she has needs. She has, she has needs often related to family, to bringing up kids, which are financial needs. So you might think, OK, would it make more sense to, for, the, for the state, the government, to support this young woman bringing up her family financially rather than to go to the expense of incarcerating her for a year or two years or whatever, whatever the sentence may be? And then we will start to think about the other harms associated with imprisoning this young woman. So in British prisons, as we sit here and speak, there are about two suicides a week at the moment, um, and disproportionately there by women. Uh, disproportionately women self-harm inside prison. So sending a, a young woman to prison can have dangerous, indeed fatal, physical consequences. It can have long-term psychological consequences. It can destroy her relationship with her family. And all of those detrimental consequences of sending someone to prison, which looks like a very straightforward criminal justice response, creates what we would say ripples of social harm through her family, through the community, and indeed through society. So it is a broader and slightly different way of looking at phenomena called crime and the way in which we deal with it. Gosh. So you've given us an outline of some of the areas of criminology and, and also some of the complexities. But Deb, I wonder if you could um, sort of talk us through the undergraduate curriculum, because with a growing department is increasing curriculum and it's an area that's been very popular for students. Yes and I think I mean I think what Steve has said is really important and I think it's also important for students to think about what's criminology and what's forensic psychology because some of the things you mentioned earlier Karen are more probably associated with thinking about forensic psychology and we do have courses in in that area as well um, but our criminology program will um, it, it it's not going to launch until October 2019 and it'll be a single honours crim the first time we've offered this at the Open University so it's quite exciting for, for all of us. Um, there'll be six 60-point modules that students will need to do. So they'll start with our um, uh, introduction to the social sciences, which is DD 102, um, and then they'll go on to do um, at level one also DD 105, which will be the new introduction to criminology module. Um, and then there'll be two more at level two and two more at level three. Um, so it will follow a, a pattern that is uh, recognizable, I think, to in other criminology programs elsewhere, where um, you get a broad introduction at level one. At level two, you start thinking a bit more in depth. You think about how you study problems of crime, how you research them, how you maybe start to think a bit more theoretically about them, how you postulate, ooh, why is this happening this way and not that way? And then at level three, it goes even deeper again, where you're trying to really get to the bottom of some of these deeper questions that Steve was talking about earlier. Um, and then also hopefully having some space for students to be able to choose more what topics they might like to explore further at level three. Excellent. So that sounds really exciting um, and you're, you're, you're clearly developing that at the moment. I wondered if you could also tell us a little bit about the postgraduate um, curriculum. And for those of you, by the way, who are interested, we have an event on this afternoon where we're looking at um, uh, some of the, not criminology, but some of the other postgraduate options uh, available from the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences. So do join us for those sessions later. So, Deb, when is the postgraduate uh, um, coming through? The postgraduate programme will get launched um, actually this October uh, 2017. Uh, and so, but it, it's, a, it's a bit different from previous, I don't know if, if people might know what we previously offered at postgraduate level, but the model is a two-year um, course, which is um, unusual, I think, <laughs> for us. And, uh, and it's, so in some ways, it's quite rapid, a, a very heavy form of study, but hopefully well supported. And they do a first 60-point uh, module, which is um, a, a introduction to social science principles. So it, it, it includes things that will be interesting to people interested in psychology, but as well as crime and justice, which is our, it's an MA in crime and justice that we'll be offering. So they'll do 60 points of this more generic 
let's think about things at a postgraduate level, more evaluative, um, critical reading, critical research. Um, and then they move on to a 120 point module, which sounds quite like quite a lot, but it's 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 fairly condensed. And as I say, I think we've worked at trying to find ways of supporting it well. And our the crime and justice element of it is uh, the module is called um, crime and global justice. So it should be quite an interesting and broad ranging um, module that covers things that are happening right the way around the world um, in terms of crime and justice issues. And students will do a project as part of that module. It won't be quite a traditional dissertation because we're trying to think more about employability sc skills and what students might be um, needing to do in their jobs or if they're trying to change jobs, the, the actual practical skills that you might need in today's world. Um, so it's not um, a traditional master's in, in the sense that you're going to have to do loads of research. It's, it's sort of trying to think about things in a more practical and applied way. Excellent. And I guess that project is going to be of real interest to students. Yeah. Um, so join us. Casey will be talking us through the first level of that um, this afternoon. So if you are interested in that, she will be outlining the, the, the first stage of that master's programme. Um, what sort of things might people be expected to do in the project? Um, well, I, I think they're going to be offered a number of a range of things to do, but it will be generally case study based so that you can really get into um, a story or a, or a topic that you're really interested in and focus on, on it. And it might be that you develop uh, campaign materials for um, something that you want to um, promote. It might be that you work on a, a creating a policy. It could be that you work on doing a report. It's various kinds of um, outputs or um, project-based uh, topics that you might in your own work or just be interested in in general um, to pursue. And so students could focus on virtually anything <laughs> in terms of their interest, I think, because criminology, the, the expertise that we have in the department would be able to support most topics that students would want to pursue in terms of thinking about crime and justice issues. I think just to say there, going back to the, some of the social harm aspects yeah. I was talking about earlier on, the fact that many of us and many of our students, prospective students, and taking this project might not feel personally affected by crime, but will feel affected and be able to relate to many of the forms of social harm that we'll introduce during the, uh, during the postgraduate qualification. So there are a whole plethora of ways as consumers, as workers, as people living in a community, in a neighbourhood, that, that uh, our students can think of themselves as involved in some aspect of social harm, which means they can undertake a project which means something to them in their lives and their communities and their workplaces, their families and their friends and so on. Excellent. I want to take a quick trip to the hot desk because we've got lots of questions sure. through from prospective students as well. Sophie and HJ, can you tell us um, some of the questions that we can hopefully try and answer? Mm, I think there's uh, a main theme of the questions of um, how to actually get into something related to criminology. So um, Gara said uh, about uh, doing a criminology module as part of uh, a combined uh, social sciences degree and would love to work in the air and uh, have no idea how to get started. So perhaps I think that's the main thread of some of these questions. So I think that's the main one we would really want to know about at the moment. Excellent. Well, we have uh, somebody joining us very soon um, from the career service who may have some tips about that. But what would you two suggest? Getting started. Getting started in, in career terms. Yeah. Um, I, I think one of the things to say, but clearly we will have our kind of uh, expert advisor coming come in shortly, but one of the things to say is that, is that a criminology degree will provide you with, um, or working in the criminological field, because of the breadth that we've just described in terms of how we do criminology, then working in the field is also a pretty kind of diverse terrain. Uh, one of the easy ways in which one might do that is to, is to, uh, to work as a volunteer in organisations that are, that are dealing, for example, with aspects of social harm. So. One of the things that comes to mind is that one of our colleagues, uh, Dr. Cooper in the department, her work is around the, the harms associated with housing policy and homelessness, and often homelessness which is produced by, by, uh, uh, by housing associations or private landlords when they are breaking some, some relevant law. So that's the kind of link with the criminal law and the legal system. Um, and uh, one of the things that Vicky also does is, is, is work with homeless people, and it seems to me that, that uh, 
whether it's kind of supporting people in shelters or working a food bank, these are things which are accessible to most of us in terms of beginning to get into the, in, into the field and working criminologically, even though it might not at first seem to be working right. criminologically. And also those are areas that could be very easy to fit around OU study. So doing, you know, the odd Absolutely. evening or weekend of volunteering might work really well in those settings. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and it can often be a stepping stone into other sorts of jobs uh, or other actual paid employment. If you've got that voluntary s service on your CV, it can really add to your application if you're trying to apply into s criminal justice agencies or probation or things like that that some people might be interested in. Yeah. I do want to talk more about the, the social harm um, in a second, but are there any other questions, Sophie and HJ, that, um, that we need to address right now? Um, I think uh, Daris very happy with your answer there. And uh, our careers advisors are uh, also putting some great links to look at. But um, I think we just like any advice to do with experience and gaining extra still skills. That's generally what we, we like to hear from the chat, I think. Well, that's a good chance then to talk about some of these things, Steve, because you've suggested some things that people can do. Um, and there are a range of free materials that the OU produce, um, which you mentioned may be really useful for people to get involved with. Absolutely. Lots of other things as well. I mean, what would some of your advice be about reading around the subject, exploring, looking at blogs, looking at, you know, various things on open learn, et cetera? Okay. Where would you direct students? Well, I, I would certainly reiterate the points I made earlier on about looking at the harm and evidence research collaborative blogs, yeah. a range of subjects from uh, from homelessness to the harms associated with imprisonment to problem gambling to police ethics to yeah. corporate crime crime in the banks and so on and so forth I'd, I'd, I'd suggest that people could uh, usefully familiarize themselves with some of those they're short pieces about a thousand words yeah. very accessible um, blogging is something that academics are doing. I mean, I know you, your department blog is, is very good and, and very popular, and it's a nice way to get regular feeds um, for students. Students are getting, I think, more savvy with using social media to sort of generate yeah. information along the way without having too much, you know, hard work to do. It's something you can read on the train. Yeah, and it's a nice way for us to make relationships and to meet, you know, we, we meet people, uh, you know, f f through blogging. People respond via Twitter and Facebook and social media, and we, we you know, we make connections with people that side. As a university, it's fantastic. Um, yeah, so so I would encourage people to uh, to, to to access the blog site. Um, I would also encourage people. There's, there was one one particular pamphlet associated with a group of people. A pamphlet. It was a book of about 120 pages. It's called Criminal Obsessions. Um, I, you may be able to see a, a screenshot of that, but if not, if you were to use a search engine, Criminal Obsessions, put my name in, Steve Toombs. Yeah. We've got that on screen okay, that will come up as a, as, a, as a free download. Now, that was something which I and several colleagues wrote the first version of in 2005, and then this, this is the second edition, which is in, in 2008. And what this does is it, it sets out a range of harms. So, what, let me go back, if I may. Yeah. Uh, it, what, what crime does, what the label crime does, is it kind of says to all of us that there are some harms in society which are more significant than others which are more worthy of, of being eradicated, treated, treated punitively or responded to punitively than others. So one of the things that we do uh, individually and collectively in the, in the criminal sessions pamphlet is to say, okay, let's take, for example, deaths. Now, deaths associated with the criminal justice system tend to be murders, and there are about 600 to 750 murders in England, Wales and Scotland in, in any one year. It's not insignificant, and we're not saying murder isn't important. But in terms of... In terms of uh, the, kind of, the kinds of ways in which people can meet a premature, uh, have their life ended prematurely, can die. Murder is pretty, a pretty rare phenomenon. So my own interest, for what it's worth, um, is in people who lose their lives at work. And each year in this country, the estimates vary, but the figures tell us that something between each year in Britain, between 40 and 50,000 people lose their lives as a result of work, either through a fatal injury or more generally through exposure to some kind of toxic substance which kills them, or a disease which kills them. Yet we don't, we don't think of, of the workplace as a, a dangerous place, and we don't have a, an elaborate system like the criminal justice system built around the workplace in order to prevent and then to respond to those deaths, even though in fact we do have criminal law which applies in the workplace. So that's kind of one of the, one of the kind of areas where we say, look, murder's important, but let's think about this in a more holistic way. The, another way in which, to which the pamphlet refers, and, and, uh, and uh, which is even more kind of under the radar, I think, is that um, our deaths associate. Well, the government each year counts something it calls excess winter deaths, and excess winter deaths are the numbers of people over 75 who die in this country every year 
between the 1st of December and the end of March. And they die essentially through conditions related to the cold. They die because they can't afford to heat their houses properly. And they die because, because their housing stock is, uh, is in poor condition. And they also die partly because of uh, and their lack of access to a healthy, healthy diet. That's between 35,000 and 40,000 people, old people, who die every year in this country routinely. Now, no one's saying murder isn't important, but I think that I and colleagues and, you know, we'd introduce people, that, that students to this material, would say that just allowing 35,000 older people to die every year in the fifth most developed economy in the, in the world is something of a social problem or a social harm. Wow. <laughs> well, I just want to do a little plug for 105 yeah, in that. Everyone yeah, just <laughs> <laughs> to do a little plug for DD 105 in that, the new mm. Introduction to Criminology module is that there's going to be a whole week on exactly what Steve's talking about here, talking about different forms of killing and death and, yeah. and murder um, in this exact kind of social harm sort of way, but also which takes murder seriously too. Yeah. yeah. So very early on then, at, at the second year of study, the first, student, well, yes. well in a level first, one module, yeah. but in your second year after that's you've right. done the broad module, yes. students are going to really get to grips with some of these issues, right. which is yes. wonderful, straight because away. that's often what students really want to yeah. get very early yeah. on. Yes, yeah, straight away. So we're excited about actually being able to do that for students, because we know we've, they've been asking for that for some time from us. So. Excellent. Lovely. All right, let me take a quick trip to the hot desk and then we're going to get our careers advisor in um, and talk a little bit about some of the things that students may want to do and how they can access um, help and support from the service. Um, Sophie and HJ. Yeah, it's been lovely in the chat. There's some really nice links being shared. Um, Leslie shared the Mel's Merseyside link um, mm. for some voluntary work, which deals with um, ex-offenders, mental health, things like that, um, which is a really nice one. So thank you very much for that, Leslie. Um, we're discussing criminal careers and mm. <laughs> <laughs> how it needs to be phrased on your CV. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's lovely. Uh, there's also a LinkedIn thing um, that we've... Um, been posted by one of the mm. advisors um, which is a LinkedIn alumni association which is such a good idea so you can go on and see what fellow students have gone on to do um, so sort of past OU students mm. um, and see where their degree has led them and I think that's a really mm. nice idea um, so the link is in the chat for that um, but we'll pop it on our resources mm. page as well. And one of the great things about the LinkedIn ones is because uh, it's a really good community you can actually um, message uh, OU graduates in those fields and perhaps ask them uh, what their route in was or uh, if they have any um, ideas for uh, volunteering in those organisations or placements or things like that. So, really yeah, nice it's idea. very yeah. useful. And, uh, yeah, we'll save that for everyone to check out later. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you very much. And great keeping all those links in the chat. Um, thank you all the careers advisors at home for doing that. OK, so we asked you um, what you could do with your joint criminology degree. Um, and we've also asked about um, on a scale uh, to what extent you agree or disagree with the question to work in criminology, the job title or role is more important than the tasks. Um, so let's see what you said in response to that first question about what could you do with your joint criminology degree. Um, so we've got uh, social researcher coming in um, at 36%, but a fairly broad spread here. I think maybe because, Steve, as you've been pointing out, there are a lot of different um, areas that people could go into. Um, Siobhan, welcome to the studio and thank you for coming in. You've perhaps got the hardest job of everybody because <laughs> we've been looking at what people could do who are enthusiasts. Um, we've got about 20% of the students out there who are already studying criminology, but a lot who aren't and a lot who are interested um, so what, what's your sort of feedback in terms of the, the, the jobs that people can think about doing? Oh, and by the way, I must tell you that in terms of uh, the, the second question about the um, extent to which they disagree, it tended to be more towards the disagree end. So they disagree. Um, let's actually take a look at that quickly. Save me reading it out. So the, t the question is, to work in criminology, um, the job title or role is more important than the tasks or actions. So very strongly disagree um, with that particular question. OK, I think that's a really key point, and it's great that students have picked up on that already. Um, yeah, you need to look beyond the job title, basically, because it can be phrased in a certain way that you think, oh, I can't do that, I don't know what that's about, and so on. So it's really key um, to kind of look more in detail at the person specification, job description, what the job will involve, <clears throat> who you'll work with, what skills um, essential and desirable that they're looking for. So I would definitely say, so they're on the right tracks there, do look beyond job titles, because it's not always obvious what that role entails. 
In terms of the range of careers that you can go into, as Steve and Deborah said earlier, it's, it's very widespread. There are some um, roles that are quite more directly related to the field of criminology and so on. For example, working in the prison or police service and so on. And then you start to move into some that are more widely related to your, what you've studied at, 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 at your degree. It could be something like social work and youth work, using some of the skills and knowledge that you've got in that career area. But then it's also just to be aware that there's a whole range of careers out there that are open to practically students of any discipline. There's not many roles that specify what discipline you have to have studied. So really, um, yes, you know, many employers or postgraduate providers may specify to one or above, but really they're looking for the, that you've got the right skills um, and you can evidence them from your studies, maybe from voluntary work or caring responsibilities or whatever it is that you do. So looking at you as an individual, what you can present to an employer is, is really important. Um, yeah, so there's loads of options, lots of transferable skills. Steve mentioned before this whole aspect of, of criticality, which I think is such an important skill, irrespective of whether you want to go into something. It just strikes me that, you know, this is such an interesting area. I mean, you know, I can't imagine many people who wouldn't want to sit down and grapple with some of these issues and maybe not get the answers to them. But, but certainly the way of thinking about these and the skills that we're looking at um, is, is arguably possibly more beneficial than the actual subject area um, in terms of what you're getting. And we've spoken a bit about how to recognise some of those skills as they're being developed. Developed. I wonder if we could sort of take a look at that, that in terms of how students get that. Critical thinking is one that, that's notoriously difficult, um, in particular in distance education, I think, because um, you need to do a lot of it and see a lot of it being done because, you know, you can't just go, go around and, like, don't criticise things, but do a bit of this and a bit of that. And, you know, like you say, it's that whole process, which it sounds like students are really walked through in terms of how to start looking at those issues and how those are scaffolded in terms of employability mm -hmm. skills. So... Deb, would that sort of start to happen in that first <coughs> level absolutely, 105? Absolutely, and we, and we are building on an evidence base in order to do this in that we've had successful criminology modules at the Open University for a number of years and we've successfully taught criticality and that's been the main, when Steve was talking earlier about our brand of OU criminology, that's really what it was. And it was in our previous course, uh, D315, which was or, uh, Order and Social Control, and our current um, third level module, which is DD301, which is Crime and Justice, the um, students at the end of this module show a level of thinking that is comparable to postgraduate students already. So we know it works. We've already taught this for many, many years at the Open University. And I think being able to start teaching it at level one is a privilege. And, and I think we'll do well, and the students who, who, who come on to the modules will do well because they will be thinking out of the box. They will be that person who's working somewhere that can suggest an innovative solution or to think you know about things in a different way and I think it's just so valuable to be able to open up your mind to tackle a problem from a different direction and we we know we teach that well yeah I, th I think sorry just to, to jump in very briefly I think there's I was thinking about about watching the tv news this morning I was getting ready to come to work and and um, or having it on in the background and 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 I'm thinking that these are skills that that we can all practice all of the time and so again for for an OU student living a busy life these are things that they can practice or or, or will practice in their everyday life so the news juxtaposed juxtaposed two two stories of a very different order this morning uh, one was the death of uh, Ian Brady the so-called Moore's murderer who's who's, uh, who's died in in the prison hospital um, and there was a, a, a kind of re recalling of what were clearly quite horrendous crimes, the, the killing of five, uh, five children. Um, and then there was a story about the numbers of people um, who are, so numbers of young people who are killed on the roads worldwide, but also in terms of Britain on, on an annual basis. It was hundreds of people mostly killed on, on, on bicycles. And, and this wasn't, this was treated as something of a social problem, uh, but it wasn't treated as at all criminal. And so it's, and so what, One's immediately thinking, well, okay, again, Brady's are awful, Brady, but where here is the biggest danger to society? What, what, what's the real social problem here? Where should we be putting our resources here? And I think you can't, once you start to, once you start doing DD105, for example, you, you, you can't let those things pass. You, you'll immediately be doing those. Um, uh, you'll find yourselves doing those voluntarily.
Yeah, no, absolutely. And I guess one of the nice things here in terms of students, especially early days, starting to look at careers, you mentioned the volunteering things. This criticality is something you can employ, but also how nice to be able to go and do things that are practical. So you're really building on a lot of skills as you're going mm -hmm. through. Um, I don't know if you saw, Siobhan, but Steve had mentioned, you know, um, certain sectors that people might want to go and um, volunteer for to get a sense of what those settings were like, what the people were like, what the processes were like. And our students have said, you know, that, it, that the skills and that sort of action is more important necessarily than maybe the brand or the company that, that, that you're working with. What advice would you give students about finding out more and doing practical things in addition to some of the stuff like researching open learn and, and volunteering? Again, I think as was picked up from the chat box, making connections perhaps via LinkedIn. It's a good way to know more about the industry or area you're interested in, make connections in networks. That's really key. And perhaps trying to be more creative in work experience or voluntary work, uh, looking at your local area. Um, but I suppose some of the immediate ones might be those organisations or charities that maybe worked with victims of crime or perhaps support offenders in some way can be a good starting point and a way in. So again, and I think voluntary work work experience is really key because it's a good way of trying out a career area to see, gain more of an understanding and see if that really is for you and the pathway that you want to take in the future. Um, but it's also, it's often a requirement for many jobs or postgraduate study as well. Um, it's a really good way of, again, developing your skills further, giving more confidence and understanding of that sector for when you go to do applications in the future to try and make yourself stand out. So it's really important. But working with vulnerable people obviously has issues of red tape and, you know, sometimes it can be difficult. They can be quite solid processes and rightly so. Um, so that can sometimes off put students. How could the career service help students maybe identify some of those areas and actually go through what can be quite a challenging process comparatively? I think, um, I mean, obviously, there's our website for information. There's a section there on work experience and networking and so on. But I think that may, to an extent, need to be looked at on an individual basis for each person based on their situation, what they want to do, where they live, that type of thing. So with that, we do offer service for one-to-one -one consultation with a careers advisor that's open to students while you're studying and up to three years after you graduate as well. So that's the opportunity to really talk more in depth about your own situation, the kind of organisations that you might approach, particularly for your local area if you're perhaps a bit restricted within reason for that. So we can really give lots of support to students, basically. Yeah. Anything either of you two want to say about those skills and how they may not be in the places you expect well, to find I'd, them? I'd say, because, especially thinking about things through a social harm perspective and also thinking about things um, from a just general more socially broad perspective that some places that you might not see at first as a as a criminal justice sort of organization might underneath actually be such a place like I don't know if I can mention but some place like the Citizens Advice Bureau mm -hmm. end up collecting quite a lot of people in all sorts of distressing very distressing um, circumstances that their lives have gone into a terrible direction and and places like a CIB, CIB have a huge voluntary program that, and an amazing training program. I've done research with them, and um, and they're very welcome to ha welcoming to people who want to get their experience there that could lead to criminal justice issues. You could become a specialist of that within the CAB. So I think there's broaden your scope in terms of thinking about the places you'd like to volunteer because social problems come in all sorts of organisations and 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 it can definitely lead toward thinking about things in criminology. I often find that, that, that uh, public buildings are places where activities are going on that we know nothing about and, and you can literally just wander in and knock on the door and find out that across the road from my house, not that people are worried about my house, but across the road from my house is, is a church um, and that in the, the churches are built on, okay, they have services, but, but the church is used by local community groups for much of the time, for example, working with, uh, working with young people, uh, providing activities for young people. Now, these aren't, these aren't criminal justice activities per se, but they certainly find, but, but supporting those kinds of activities in communities certainly links into many of the concerns that we'd, uh, uh, we'd ask students to think about on our, on our criminology degrees. Excellent. You've given us a long list of sorts of roles and um, sectors that people could go into. Things like, you know, voluntary or third uh, sector work with communities and victims. And we've talked about some of those non-governmental organisations, social research, community development workers, social work, social services, civil service, criminal justice worker, local government office, private risk and security worker, human rights and other um, advocacy NGOs, legal work, etc. So there's a whole range of, of, of you know, prospective areas that people could 
could go into with their criminology degree. Yeah, absolutely. And and some of those organisations are really calling out for people. And if you're happy, if you're happy to move different places and go to other countries and, yeah. and, and explore the world, that those opportunities are there for you too. And I guess you could have that flexibility to change settings. So whilst you've got those core cool skills, yes. you could work in one area and then have an entirely different, almost different career, but whilst using similar skills. Absolutely. Absolutely. So when might people want to then think, OK, apart from it being really interesting, postgraduate study might be right for me in terms of employability. When might that matter more? Is it more in terms of doing things like the research and the academic side of things? Or are there certain roles that would really warrant that sort of um, uh, project-based approach well, yeah. that you would benefit I, from? I think it is important to point out that the current postgraduate programme that we're, we're offering really isn't suitable for somebody who wants to go on to a research career or to do a PhD. It's not really designed for that. Um, it's more designed for people who want to um, maybe commission research or evaluate it or, you know, become an internet sensation in terms of, of blogging, uh, you know, their amazing skills at evaluating other people's work. So I think there's... Um, the, the skills that this, this particular postgraduate program is trying to um, teach uh, is, is more finely tuned to practical um, and um, maybe workplace oriented uh, problems rather than a research career per se. Excellent. Oh, thank you all for coming in. That's that's all we've got time for. But but Steve, Deb and, and Siobhan, thank you so much for coming in. You've given us such an inspirational outline about some of these various aspects and some really practical tips that people can go off and look up and go and do. Um, and Siobhan, I know we've only very briefly covered some of the aspects, um, but we've had a lot of advisors in the chat. So you can go to the career section on the website, book in one of those consultations if you'd like a bit more of a bespoke approach to something. Ideal time over the summer as well, perhaps if you've done your EMA and then you could book that in and start having a look around for some volunteering opportunities, do a MOOC, etc. Get sorted and organised because we may not have sunshine. Right, Steve, Deb and, and Siobhan, thank you very much. Sophie and HJ, let's just have a few minutes to wrap up um, for, from this session this morning. It's been lovely. Um, <clears throat> thank you again to our education advisors and all the links and things in the chat. Um, we've all been really helpful. Um, I know that there's a lot of, a lot of people now see more like they know what they want to do mm. more focused on where they're going which is lovely um and it'd be great if you could catch, uh, keep us up to date so attend some future student hub live events and let us know how mm. you're getting on um uh, especially uh gareth said he's uh, applying for the civil service fast stream this year so it'd be great to see how you get along with that so you have to pop bit over of, to a competition there. yes <laughs> <laughs> it'd be have really to... good to see mm. how you get on yeah. <laughs> 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 but uh, no, it's always good to catch up with people. We've had some new people and some uh, people who've been to uh, events before. But yes, echoing what Karen said, the careers advisors are absolutely lovely. And it's not just careers. They um, helped me out with um, uh, postgraduate application as well. So they looked over it. And I have to say, they're so lovely and friendly. But yeah, we've been posting uh, links in the chat for uh, their Twitter and their page. So definitely take a look. Anything we missed, remember, just email us, studenthub at open.ac.uk, and we'll get back to you with a very informed answer. Yes, and hopefully we'll see many of you in the afternoon session, mm. uh, the first session this afternoon. Um, we're back at one for that one. Yes, so. lots of exciting modules. So some people were saying they're doing creative writing and uh, criminal criminology i'm very interested in hearing about the new welsh history module <laughs> rv1 <laughs> particularly particularly interest for me but yes lots of great stuff that i'm sure everyone would like this afternoon as well excellent sophie and hj thank you very much um, and thank you at home for participating for sharing advice and for being positive and enthusiastic i hope you've enjoyed the show let us know what you think there's a little feedback section on the website um, so if you'd like to offer us any suggestions we'd love to hear from you um, and also if you're a prospective student and we haven't answered your questions or you're interested in finding out more drop us an email and we'll forward it to the correct department for you that's studenthub at open.ac.uk um, so uh, send us a line and, and we'll get that uh, all sorted and you can find out a bit more but go back to the website and enjoy the links there. We'll see you at one o'clock um, for our FAST showcase where we're looking at nine of the new modules that are coming out this September. Whether or not you have a choice to make, there'll be something of interest as we look at the undergraduate and postgraduate options available to you. We'll leave the chat room open for a little while so you can continue to talk to each other if you would like to. But to engage with the FAST event, you need to log back out and then log in again because there are separate links on the website. Um, so don't forget to do that or you'll miss all the action. I'll see you at one o'clock today. Thank you for watching and that's all from us at the Student Hub Live. Bye for now.